All right, so where we left off, we had a definition for the scalar potential, uh, which is the scalar potential as a function of position and time is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times the integral of the charge density through r prime and t prime, where these are your uh, retarded uh, time and, and space coordinates, divided by r minus r prime, uh, integrated over the entire volume of space, although since we're working with r primes as our dummy variable here, this is going to be uh, volume in the retarded uh, coordinate system. So what we need to know is what is our charge density in space? Well, that's pretty straightforward. It's whatever the value of your charge is times a three-dimensional delta function. because we're looking at a point charge in this case, which is moving in any which way around space. And uh, equivalently, we can look at our current as being equal to the current times a three-dimensional delta function as well. Now, looking at this quickly, you might just plug this into here and say integrated over all space. Well, that's just going to pick out your Q and you're going to have this position on the bottom here, but that only applies if you're doing this in regular volume coordinates, and we are not. We're doing this in the uh, delayed or retarded, uh, retarded time and uh, position coordinates, so we're going to need to make some adjustments. Now, the best way to visualize this is to look at something a little bigger than an electron or a point charge, something that's got a little bit of, of space to it, so we're going to use a, a train or a car here, which is moving in this direction. Now, if you're looking at light being emitted from you know, the back of the train as well as the front of the train at any given time delta t, you're going to get front of the train moving all the way to here. And if we define the train length to be L, we can define this whole thing to be L prime. Now, how do we find out what L prime is? Well. That's not all that difficult because we can see that looking at the train, the velocity times the time interval between which the, the light left the train and we are seeing it is going to be equal to L prime minus L. That's pretty straightforward. And equivalently, since we're talking about electromagnetic waves, they're moving at the speed of light. So at this later time, light that was emitted here has now arrived here, which means C delta t is equal to L prime. We can combine these, and we get L prime minus L over V is equal to L prime over C. Or if we want to isolate L prime, which is what we're trying to do, L prime is equal to L times 1 over 1 minus V over C. Uh, I'm going to define V over C is equal to beta, just to avoid uh, having too many fractions within fractions. And everything we were looking at here is uh, generalized in one dimension here. But if we're looking at an actual point charge, it's obviously going to be radiating in three dimensions. So we're going to have to generalize that to a volume, which is very easily done. V prime is equal to V times 1 over 1 minus beta. And if we're looking at beta in the, uh, as a vector, then it needs to be, of course, in the direction of motion. So the normal direction to the velocity, which in our case is in three dimensions, so kind of all over the place. Now, we can plug this right back into our original equation here, which is what we're going to do. So we've got phi of r and t is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times 1 over 1 minus beta d. And the integral we had before. Now we're going to define our uh, charge density as q times the three-dimensional delta function. And the denominator is the same as it was before. And now we can integrate this over regular volume coordinates because we've taken out that factor that we had to adjust by. And here we can go back to that original result, which is what you would think would happen here. 
integrating over all of space, you're just going to pull out your total charge here because the delta function is zero everywhere except for the location of that charge. So your final answer is going to be one over four pi epsilon naught, as always, times Q over R minus R prime. And we're going to throw on that factor of 1 minus beta in the direction of the field. We can also generalize this to the vector potential if we set our starting point a little differently and realize a couple facts. We can say that A starts with mu naught j of r t prime, both primed, over the 4 pi, oops, r minus r prime, and going over the primed uh, volume integral. We're going to end up with the same constants coming out, but if we realize that j is just equal to q times v times three-dimensional delta function, then our final answer comes out as being something easy to work with, which is A of R and T is equal to 1 over C, which is the speed of light, times your scalar potential. Rather than rewriting all this again, we're just going to put in the scalar potential and with an extra factor of beta. And that all comes out from the relationship between C and mu naught epsilon naught, as well as the presence of a V here, because we said that beta is equal to V over C. So that's our final answer. From there, we can obviously take the curl or take some, some derivatives there and get the electric and uh, magnetic fields. And from there, we can get things like the pointing vector and uh, certain power functions for antennas and all sorts of useful information. But that's about it for now.